you know, universal basic income, universal basic income. So let's, let's start with what it is. What is universal basic income? And, uh, you know, how does it how does it function? So I'm going to take as probably the best idea here is um, is a proposal made by uh, by Charles Murray. Now, Charles Murray is a pretty serious guy. I, I, nothing Charles Murray suggests should be taken lightly. He's not a lightweight. He's a, he's a heavyweight. He put out a book that basically makes this, uh, this case. It's called In Our Hands, A Plan to Replace the Welfare State. And um, the idea is this. Uh, you know, people out there, uh, we've got... Um, all these government programs that help people out, we've got welfare, we've got like 300 different welfare programs from food stamps to unemployment insurance, you know, insurance in quotes, because it's not really insurance, to all these other different types of, uh, of welfare and uh, government help and government assistance. You know, Social Security has this massive program uh, that if you get... Um, you know, if, if, if you can't work or, or uh, you know, if you get injured, if you get something like that, there's huge amount of subsidies uh, that go to you. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, so you've got, you've got Social Security in it, and you've got Social Security. So if you get old, right, if you get old, this is covered. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, then there's Medicare. If you get sick and you're old, this, the government basically pays your health care bills. And then there's Medicaid, that if you're poor and you're sick, the government pays your medical bills. And then you've got, um, I don't know, what else do you have? Well, you've got a million different things. You've got governments at the state level, at the federal level, uh, redistributing wealth from some people to other people on, on just a massive scale and constantly and in a hundred different types of programs. It's not even one program. It's it's all, you know, there's so many government agencies from housing agencies that subsidize housing for the poor to, uh, to all the different welfare agencies that exist out there. there. There are literally hundreds of programs. The big ones being, big ones, is just straight kind of welfare. But the really big ones, and I consider these welfare, I know many of you don't. The really big ones are, are Social Security, Medicare, and the big one right now that's being discussed as part of the Obamacare so-called pretend, let's pretend we're going to repeal bill uh, that Republicans uh, can't actually even do that. And that's a whole other topic I've already talked about. We might talk a little bit about today is the inability of Republicans to repeal Obamacare. But so here you, and, and then you've got Obamacare, right? Which Obamacare in, it, in of itself is a massive subsidization of insurance rates, insurance rates to all different, um, different people, right? So, so young people and old people and uh, sick people, everybody is getting a subsidy from the government, which is another form of welfare, right? So you've got, think about all the different ways, hundreds of different ways in which the government takes money from some people and give it to others. Now, put aside all the corporate welfare nonsense, all the subsidies there. We'll set those aside. We're not talking about those. We're just talking about like when, from person to person, person to person, redistribution of wealth, person to person, money taken from some and given to others, all in the name of helping the poor. And and really, this has gotten pushed during two big pushes during three different administrations. During FDR's administration, when we got Social Security and we got much of the infrastructure of the welfare state. Johnson, where we got the war on poverty, the war on poverty, right? And of course, what, did the, what has happened since the war in poverty was started in the 1960s? Nothing. I mean, there's as many people poor today as there were back then. It has done nothing to actually alleviate poverty. But, but as a consequence of that, we have had, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of different, uh, different welfare programs all instituted in the name of the war on poverty, right? So, uh, so that was uh, that was in the 1960s, and of course we got George W. Bush, uh, a big time, a, a big time, um, uh, you know, a, a welfare uh, proponent uh, who expanded Medicare through Part D of Medicare, expanded Medicare dramatically, and uh, you know, again, Medicare is a massive 
welfare program. Now, some of you say, but I pay my taxes. So only a fraction of Medicare's true costs are being paid by you, but it's not your money is paying for your expenses. Your money is going into a pool that then is given to some people. It's a massive redistribution of wealth. Your money is basically given to retired people today. So Medicare is a massive redistribution program. You cannot get away from that. And same with Medicaid and same with Social Security. The Social Security Trust Fund has no money in there because all the money that you have given through your payroll taxes has been spent already. What does it mean it's been spent already? It's been given to people. It's been redistributed. All right. So all of this, so that's just a set of context, right? We have massive quantities of Massive numbers of uh, welfare programs out there. And UBI, at its best, under the Charles Murray proposal, which I think is the best of all of them, would replace all of them with a fixed sum, same sum that everybody gets. All right. Uh, you're listening to your Run Book Show. We're talking about UBI today, or one of the topics we're going to talk about. Um, you're going to get a very unique perspective that you won't get anywhere else. Uh, share it. Link to this. Get your friends to listen. Get your friends um, engaged. You can call in 888-900-3393. We'll be taking calls after this break. You've been listening to your Ron Brooks Show. We're, we're, we're talking about redistribution of wealth. We're talking about the welfare state, and we're talking about proposals to replace much of the welfare state with what's called universal basic income, and a number of different proposals being floated out there from Silicon Valley, Mark Zuckerberg, was talking about it the other day about how wonderful it is that in Alaska they have the equivalent of universal basic income, which is money. You know, there's a big fund in Alaska that everybody in Alaska gets a check from. Um, it doesn't quite work that way, but but Mark Zuckerberg was romanticizing it. And then and then you've got Elon Musk walking, going around the world saying, "Oh, jobs are going to be lost. Nobody's going to be working in a few years because robots are going to do." everything. And then what are we going to do? People are going to die. Unless you know how to build robots, or unless you know, well, robots are going to build robots, right? Human beings are going to be go extinct, according to Elon Musk, because of um, robots, artificial intelligence. So we need to keep ourselves alive by redistributing wealth from the few of us who are going to actually produce any wealth to the rest of us in the world. We're going to have to redistribute wealth from robots to the rest of us. And actually, I think Bill Gates to go was talking about taxing robots. Taxing robots because they produce the wealth, tax them, and uh, and then redistribute the wealth to the rest of us, and the rest of us will be happy. All right. If you want to end, I think we've got some problems on the phone lines, but you can try 888-900-3393. Uh, give it a try and see. Uh, but if you've got any ideas, comments, suggestions about uh, universal basic income, what's your view? What's your opinion about the whole thing? Let me know. Okay, so so universal basic income basically is, is at least the Charles Murray proposal, which I think is, is the best I've seen so far. So I'm going to take the best case, right? Basically says, we end all welfare programs, including, and I include under welfare programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and all the rest of the hundreds of other redistribution programs. So... Uh, you know, in the United States, we have 11 different medica uh, medical uh, welfare programs to aid the poor. 11 different programs on the federal level. We have cash aid. We have five different programs, right? Five different programs, uh, including the Earned Income Tax Credit, which we'll get to in a little bit, a little bit which is kind of a negative income tax. Um, we've got... Two, uh, 12 different food type programs, food stamps, food subsidies, food stamps problem, right? We've got 15 different educational programs, money given to poor kids to go to school, but 15 different ones. And then we've got 13 housing programs, 13 different programs that are all mean tested, that are all based on how poor you are, where we take money from some people and give it to the others, right? 15 social services programs, eight employment and training programs, and two programs focused on energy, I guess subsidizing energy for poor people, uh, uh, oil and gas and, and electricity and whatever. Right. Hundreds of these programs, hundreds. I mean, that's just the main big federal programs. The 80 plus 
federal welfare programs, the, the, the names of the departments, I've got a list here, it just goes on and on forever. That doesn't include any estate programs and all the rest of it, right? Why does it concern me, somebody asked. It concerns me because they're taking my money and they're spending it on all these programs. They're taking my money, my tax money, and they're dishing it out to millions of people in the most inefficient, ridiculous way. That's kind of the practical side of it. And then what right do they have to my money? They just take my money, they steal my money, and then they get to decide... They get to decide how to spend it. It's mine. Why not? Why not me? Right? Why not me taking uh, decide how to spend my money? It's my money. It's not theirs. How do you eat? How do you, how do you get money? You work. If you work, you earn money. You earn it. You're not stealing it. You're not taking it from somebody else. Then you spend it any way you want. And if you want to help people by giving that money to charity and by helping them out, great, good for you. If it's consistent with your values and if you have the money to spare and if you don't can't think of better uses for the money, go for it. But that's not the system we have. The system we have is you work hard, you make the money, and then the government steps in completely arbitrarily because some people voted for some idiots in Washington, D.C., and they've determined the tax rate, and they decide how much of your money they're going to take away, and they're going to spend it on some things you like and some things you hate and, and a lot of things you hate, and you, you have no say in it. You have zero say in it. And that's, you know, that's the world in which we live, and that's this welfare state. And it's so inefficient and it's so cumbersome. And think about the hundreds of thousands of bureaucrats working in it who could be doing something productive, actually creating wealth instead of redistributing it and sucking away their own salaries. And what, what Charles Murray suggests is very simple and very appealing to those of us who, who, who think the government is, is, is incredibly inefficient. And... Uh, you know, they are, those of us who think it's immoral what the government is doing, but, but, in, but incredibly, incredibly economically stupid and inefficient. One solution to that is to get rid of all of these programs, get rid of all of these programs, and then instead just give people a check for a, a lump sum amount. In Charles, Murray, uh, in Charles Murray's case, it would be $10,000. Give everybody in the United States who's an adult $10,000. And they can do whatever they want with that money, but they're not going to get anything else from the government. That is it. And whether they have a job or not, they still get the $10,000. So it, it's not the case, like I've seen uh, that often happens, that you know you have a job and you're making, you're making very little, let's say, barely, barely surviving, right? And then... Um, and then you lose that job. And now you're getting welfare, because welfare is tax-free, you're getting welfare that's worth more than what you were making in the job. Unemployment insurance, all these 90 programs, if you add them all up, you're actually getting more than what you got on the job. So getting a job now is a negative. Is, is negative. You have no incentive to go out and get a job. Your incentive is basically to stay on welfare. So what the uh, alternative uh, universal basic income does is it does away with that because whether you have a job or don't have a job, you still get the, the, the basic income. You still get the $10,000. So your incentive now, if you want to become wealthier, is to get a job because you get to keep the rest. All right, we're talking about universal basic income. You're listening to your Ron Brooks show on the Blaze Radio Network. And um, so we set it up, right? We set it up. We've got all these welfare programs uh, and... Uh, Yet, the, the idea is, Charles Murray's idea is, to replace all these uh, welfare programs with just one, one simple payment. Re reduce the bureaucracy, ultimately in the long term, reduce the cost of these welfare programs, take away the disincentive that people on welfare have to actually engage in work, actually uh, to make a living. And uh, sounds great. Now, that's one, one thrust, uh, one, one source of the argument. Uh, and that's, that's Charles Murray, and that's what the, the conservatives and, and the right uh, view. But there's, a, there's another 
thrust of the argument, and that comes out of Silicon Valley. And the other thrust of the argument is, look, guys, robots are going to take all our jobs. So they're not going to, there's not going to be work in the future to be done. They're not going to be opportunities to actually engage in, uh, in any kind of job. And suddenly, for a vast number of people on the planet who, who are engaged in manual labor, manual labor, uh, manual labor is, um, is gone, right? Manual labor is going to disappear. Robots are going to do everything. I mean, think about it. They're not going to be assembly line jobs. They really are not going to be assembly line jobs, and I, I agree completely. They're not going to be auto jobs and auto parts jobs and manufacturing jobs. All those jobs are going to be done by robots. And the robots are not sophisticated yet to do a lot of those jobs, but give it 10, 20 years, and the robots will do pretty much every manufacturing job that you can imagine. But then it's not just the manual jobs. The whole area of what's called artificial intelligence where it is going to replace human beings in smart jobs as well on figuring out uh, the optimal way to, to, to design and construct an assembly line. I don't know that human beings do that today, never mind in the future. Um, but, but, but here's one that, that I think is pretty amazing. They have a software today that if you feed it in like MRI scans, is better at detecting certain cancers than any radiologist is. And you could imagine software a hundred times more powerful in 10 years because, because the rate at which these things get better is exponential. It, it, a lot of technology today follows Moore's law. Moore's law is that, uh, what was it, that the rate of, uh, the speed of uh, it processing, computer processing, computer programming, it doubles every, I forget how many years uh, Moore's law is, but it's, it's, it's an it's a exponential dramatic growth. Maybe somebody, somebody in one of the chats can remind me uh, uh, what law, Moore's law does in terms of growth. So imagine this uh, software, the smart software, the software that can analyze huge quantities of data, software that can actually learn, learn in a sense, a, 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 from the data. Moore's law is every year it doubles, right? So imagine the growth path when that happens. And you can see it actually happening in computer processing power. Somebody else says two years. All right, when you guys decide whether it's a year or two years, let me know. We've got, we've got conflict on the, uh, on the chat board. Um, but imagine... Imagine what would happen in terms of robots, in terms of software, in terms of AI, in terms of all these things, to all these jobs, including, you know, things like radiology. So it's every two years a double, sorry, not every year, every two years, including radiology. It's massive growth, right? And, you know, so radiologists are going to go away, but, but there are thousands of jobs that are going to disappear, I mean, one of the things I tell people is one of the things you should do just as a self-help thing, as, as, as taking responsibility for your own life, as really caring about your own life, is think, is think, consider. As part of your plan of your career, can a robot or a computer take my job in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years? Take truck drivers. There are three and a half million truck drivers in the United States. Three and a half million truck drivers in the United States. And the real question is, what are they going to do when you get self-driving trucks? Now, some people think that's five years away. I think it's more like 10, 20 years away. But at some point, those three and a half million people will not have a job driving trucks. So what happens to them? And Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and a lot of these high-tech guys are saying, nothing, they're going to starve unless we do something about it. And the solution, therefore, is to guarantee a basic income is to say everybody gets something. Now, they would probably do it higher than 10000 because they don't think these people will ever get a job, so they're going to have to make it enough so people can really live on, so they'll make it more than $10,000. Uh, uh, Charles Murray suggests 10000 because he actually expects these people to get a job above and beyond the 10000 10000 is just a basic floor, kind of a, social, a real social security for everybody. Right? So this is the idea. So you've got two strands a very kind of strand that comes from the high-tech industry, uh, primarily held by, by people who have more left-leaning views, and that is the idea 
that uh, people are just not going to have jobs because of robots, because of artificial intelligence. And then you have a whole strand that comes more from the right, more for conservatives, although a lot of uh, the left supports this as well, that just as a way of being more efficient in replacing welfare, we've got to take care of people, we've got to give them some basic way of living. The system we have today is is going bankrupt, and it is going bankrupt. This country will be bankrupt because of Social Security and Medicare. It's going bankrupt so we can, we can simplify it, we can cut costs, we can cut bureaucracy and make it more efficient and take away the disincentive that people have when they're on welfare to get a job. 